How are you doing? Welcome. I'm fine, thank you. And you? Good, good. I'm good. I'm 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 pretty pretty tired today. Yesterday I was in a 24 hour uh, live career session actually. So there's this oh, wow. crazy guy called Neil Ewington who did 24 hours like without sleeping um, with 24 careers coaches each doing an hour uh, presentation. So I was one of those. I did a presentation at 8 p.m. But he was around the clock. So he had UK people in the day, Australian, American evening. Oh, wow. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm a bit tired, but I only did an hour, so I shouldn't be tired. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, congrats on, you know, the job that you've got. Why don't you start by giving a bit of background on, on you, uh, what the role is, and uh, yeah, we can get going that way. Okay. Um, hi everyone, I'm Jola. I um, go to Loughborough University and I'm currently on my placement um, with Deloitte and I currently work as an analyst in tech consulting um, in Deloitte Digital, their customer marketing division. So um, that's where I work and um, yeah, did you want to know more about how I got the job? Yeah, yeah, I guess um, before we get into that, firstly shout out Loughborough because I went there as yes. well um first of all and I absolutely love my time at, at Loughborough and they really uh, stress the importance of doing a placement which I think is really good because um yeah for me I find it very hard to get a placement but then what once I had that in the in the bag it was much easier to get the grad scheme so yeah, I guess firstly yeah why did you decide um, to do a placement why do you think that was important yeah. you know that's actually a funny story because um I was trying to decide what university course I wanted to do and I finally got around to doing international business that's what I studied by the way sorry um I finally got around to doing it and then I was like let me apply to different places and I saw a lot of places were asking me to do a placement and I was kind of put off by that I was like I don't want to spend four years in uni everybody's spending three years in uni why do I have to do four and so initially I actually just picked Loughborough because I was like I feel like that's the best uni for me I still wasn't on the idea of a placement but I was like I have to do it because it's actually compulsory for my course so I was like I have to do it so I think by first year I was like this might actually be a good opportunity I've never had a job before it'd be really nice to work um, in the industry before I actually pick my graduate job because with a graduate job, you're likely to go on a graduate scheme and you don't want to go off the graduate scheme because there's training and all sorts involved. So I basically wanted to use the placement experience to understand what I liked, what I didn't like, know more about the industry. So I think that's how I kind of came to grips with the idea of doing a placement. And I'm so glad that I did or that I'm doing one. Yeah, I think it's a great thing to do. Firstly, you can get yourself some money in your pocket, which is always a nice thing. Um, yeah, for me, it was figuring out what I don't want to do, you know, that that really saved me, I think, a lot of time. And then, yeah, obviously, it really boosts your, your CV as well. So, yeah, before I guess we get into the application process and your tips on that, give us a little bit of a break, breakdown of the role that you're doing currently, what it means, what, what kind of you get up to. OK, so I work in the customer marketing part, um, Deloitte Digital, so it's the technology consulting part of um, Deloitte. And essentially, I help with digital marketing. So that could be with the strategy that could be helping businesses transform. Like, for example, um, with Corona and the whole pandemic, um, a lot of businesses are turning more, um, turning their strategy more into a digital strategy and they're updating their digital channels, trying to adopt to, you know, this new e-commerce um, lifestyle of businesses. So I would um, essentially help with that. I would help with SEO, so that's search engine optimization. Um, so um, I would help businesses basically unlock the value of um, their digital channels and of course social media marketing, let's not forget that as well. Um, a lot of businesses are keen to more have like have a brand personality. So essentially I would help with that as well. And there's a bit of project management as well, just making sure that um, businesses, you know, helping um, helping us help businesses essentially. So that would kind of be what my role would entail. Brilliant. That sounds really cool. That sounds really cool. I think you've done well to get that. I'm a little bit jealous of that. Wow. So so strategy, SEO, digital marketing, bit of brand there as well. That that's really cool. And that sets you up nicely as well for, for graduate schemes to work in any area of marketing, I guess. So that's really cool. 
So, so let's dive into, I guess, getting a job at Deloitte then. So, yeah, I mean, I think there'll be a lot of people um, listening, the many thousands of listeners, I'm sure, um, who, who would be interested in working at Deloitte. So, yeah, any tips and advice you have on that, but maybe just sort of tell us the uh, application story and how you got on and, yeah, and share yes. your advice. This is quite long, but I'll try and shorten it, you know. That's what we need. No, no, give us the oh, long okay. version. <laughs> so essentially, like I said, I um, I only came to good to doing a placement like towards maybe mid end of first year. So I'd spoken to many people and a lot of people had told me placement is so hard to get. Like, obviously, you have to get one because of your course, but it's really hard to get that, you know, start early that you don't want to be here in April looking for a job that it can be quite upsetting and demotivating. So I was like, okay, cool. Thank God for Loughborough. That's why I always shout them out. Loughborough, for, as part of my course um, in the skills module, Loughborough makes sure that you have a good CV. So they make you write your CV and it's actually part of coursework. So you're obviously going to try and make sure that your CV is good. So my CV was, I guess, decent or good. And that's a tip I actually have make sure that you have at least 25, I mean, 25 seems a lot, but make sure you have at least 25 buzz keywords like skills in your CV, because apparently a lot of companies have a CV tracker and they basically, um, they basically look for all the skills. So if you see the job description, so if, you, if you're gonna apply for a placement, make sure you look at the job description and try and get the key skills from there, because that's what they want. Okay, sidetracked, but essentially um so my cv was was fine so i was like okay during summer i was like okay i have to get serious for second year how can i get serious so i said let me look at loughborough's placement portal and see the placements that are being offered because at the time i wasn't familiar with like rate my placement and all the other um job um forums essentially so i said let me look at my placements portal that's another tip i would say um your placement team they're there for a reason. They are really there for a reason. Use them as a good resource. So um, I, yeah, so I went on the placement site and I saw Deloitte and I was like, oh, okay, well, I've heard of this company. It's a big company. Let me just apply, you know? So I saw that they were opening roles. And at the time I knew I wanted to apply for a marketing role, but I didn't know what exactly, um, I wanted to do marketing. Like I said, I just wanted to use my placement to explore. And someone told me, they were like, whatever you do, make sure it's in tech because tech is growing. Tech will always be relevant. So make sure that it's in tech. And I was like, okay, how can I fuse my love for marketing and tech? And it was like, it was a sign. I literally just saw tech consulting digital like marketing or something along the lines of that like digital and I was like okay let me read more about it so that application so applying for my role essentially the tech consulting role at Deloitte Digital actually introduced me to digital marketing I didn't know what it was I just saw marketing as marketing whether it was online whether it was digital sorry that's the same thing whether it was digital or um I guess traditional methods I just saw it as the yeah. same thing so it was actually Deloitte's application that introduced me to that I was like great this sounds like an amazing role let me apply so I applied and um so I got the email saying oh um do the next test by the way there is no I don't know if it's changed but there is no um CV for Deloitte so you don't apply with the CV I don't know if that's changed, but when I applied, there was no CV. So it was fine in terms of updating my CV. Um, so I, yeah, so I have the first test, which is more of like a verbal reasoning, psychometric. I guess there isn't a numerical aspect to it. So I had that test. And in terms of preparing for it, I won't lie, I did not prepare. <laughs> for it oh wow very confident <laughs> not because I was confident but I think okay in terms of I did a little preparation in the sense of checking what the test was probably going to be like online but I noticed that it wasn't something that you could really prepare for they were just kind of trying to evoke your skills from it in the sense that the math I would say 
was hard but it wasn't like hard math it was about using your brain and using the information they've given you so um I knew that I couldn't really prepare for it so I just went in and I was like okay let me just do it and try my best and um I eventually got through to that stage which I was very very proud of because like it's quite daunting applying to a big company so you're just like oh I won't make it anyway but let me just go. I'm that type of person in general. I'm like, I won't make it anywhere. I won't make it anywhere, but I don't give up. I keep on going. So I got, um, so I got through to that stage. And then the next stage was like a mix of, a, it was, I guess it's called the immersive assessment. I'm not too sure, but and, and just was, before we go into that, just some of the online test elements, so, because I just want to really understand that. So when you did your research, you tried to figure out what it would be like on the specific Deloitte uh, test, right? So you kind of yeah. had a, an idea what it was like going in and that kind of gave you confidence. But I like what you said as well, like you, you didn't focus on, you almost assumed you might not get it. So you just said, I'm just going to do my absolute best that I can. Um, yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I mean, I'm sure people should, I, I would advise people to be more confident in themselves, but I definitely wasn't. I was like, oh, it's a big four. Like, who am I? I'm probably not going to make it. But I was like, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. So definitely try. Um, so, yeah. So moving on to the second test, this test was, I think it was a mix of video. So basically it was a massive test. It was supposed to emulate working at Deloitte and the type of things you would be doing. So they would ask you to send emails to people. They would, um, it was a mix of like timed video assessments, asking you a question. And I think they asked, it was more competency-based questions, like tell me a time you did this, tell me a time you did that. So, um, so it was a mix of that, all sorts of things. And then there was a bit of maths in it as well. So that test, wow, that test was very hard for me. It was very challenging for me, I won't lie. And I didn't actually finish the test yeah I did the numerical test the so it was all together the um video email numerical I didn't finish I guess I mean the video and email was mixed so but I did finish numerical part that was like part one also but I didn't actually finish the test because like I said it was timed and I was so bummed I was like you know what you weren't you said you weren't going to get it already like it's fine that just keep on going and try and apply to different places so and Deloitte told me they would get back to me in about three weeks so three weeks had come and I actually got a rejection letter well essentially it wasn't a rejection but it was like essentially I was put on the waiting list so it was like we have stronger applicants for you right now um sorry we have stronger applicants right now um hopefully we'll get back to you in January if there's a spot and I was like, well, that's their way of saying no. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, OK, well, let me move on to something else. And then two days later, randomly, I got an email saying I'm in. Crazy, the was, pendulum swinging. How did you feel? So when you got that email, were you like, this is over now, move on I, to the next one? Honestly, I was like, it's over. Like, I tried my best, you know, but you said it from the beginning that like, you might not make it, but just, you know, at least you, at least you didn't fail the test. Cause I think they will tell you, I think in the email, they specified that you didn't fail. It will say you passed the test, but we have stronger applicants. So at least I had it in my heart that, yeah, I passed the test that maybe I should have just finished. Cause I was really like dwelling on the fact that I didn't finish the test. So it's like, maybe if I finished the test then I would have gotten in, but like, it's fine. You know, I was a bit bummed, but like I said, I didn't have it close to my heart like that because I was like, I'm probably not going to get it. So when I got the acceptance letter for the final interview, sorry, because it's not over. Yeah, yeah. But when I got the acceptance <laughs> letter for the final interview, I was like, I was, I was just over the moon, to be honest. I was over the moon. And then... um. And someone had actually told me, because I had spoken to a few people, again, people that my placement um, connected to that worked at Deloitte. And they actually told me that those first two tests were the harder part. And I didn't believe them. I was like, the interview must be the harder part. Like, they see you, you know, you're going to have to talk. I went for the interview and I won't lie, the interview was the easiest and part. And so was it just an interview or was it a assessment so, centre as well? Or? 
It wasn't an assessment centre, but there was a group activity and then there was a um, final sing um, singular interview. But um, I wouldn't call it an assessment centre per se. But yeah, um, so the group interview went well. I felt like everybody there in terms of who I was working with was fine. And I actually do have a tip for group interviews. Um, so this might come across a bit weird, but try and make sure you're either the timekeeper or the lead but being the lead doesn't mean you're always talking much it's just kind of guiding the conversation being like oh guys okay we've said this 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 and this um how do we feel about this make sure you ask people who have um who are trying to say something and you realize maybe they're a bit quiet ask them how they feel um and also like i said if you can't like be the timekeeper or the lead, I would suggest um, just, like I said, bringing ideas together and being like, okay, guys, I'm writing this down. This is what we've said. Um, should we delegate tasks? Like try and be involved. Not everyone has to be leader because we, you know, you can't have too many leaders in the group, but try and be involved. And I just think the easiest way or being involved is being lead or the timekeeper, but there are other ways to get involved. But definitely try and be involved and say what you have to say, but don't force it. Be yourself, you know, but show and prove that, um, show and prove why you're here essentially and why you should get the job via that um, way. Yeah. And in terms and, of- And why, just on the timekeeper bit as well, why, why timekeeper? So I guess that's a good way to sort of, get involved and make sure you're always doing something and you're, you're I guess you're a bit centre of the room in a sense because you're you're keeping everyone on track yeah um I guess so I mean you won't even do much talking you just be like guys okay we have five minutes left or we have two minutes left should we try and wrap this up you know but a timekeeper I guess shows um organization skills it shows that you know time management and that's actually really important more important than you would think in um the role at least what I know so far um so I guess that's that and it just centers the conversation as well so I, I would suggest that role as well um so after that so that was for the group interview and then the um the the one-on-one -on -one interview was I think it was with a senior manager so that can be quite daunting as well and oh you do I guess it is assessment center because you do have a presentation it's a five minute presentation it sounds like an assessment center yeah <laughs> I mean it was maybe because yeah. it didn't feel like it because I've been to other assessment mm -hmm. centers and it didn't feel so much like it but I guess it is an assessment center um but you don't do any tests that's why I didn't call okay. it an assessment. yeah um yeah, so the one-on-one -on -one interview as well was actually really nice because even though it is a five-minute presentation about, like, they would give you something prior before to talk about, you're sitting down. You're sitting down and you can have a piece of paper or whatever to guide you. So, like, it's almost like you're talking to somebody about your um, about the topic and obviously your interests. And one thing I will say for the um, final interview, the one-on-one -on -one interview is that, do not talk about something you do not know a lot about. Because I think they asked me what my interests were in terms of digital marketing. And I was like, yeah, I'd be really interested or I'm quite interested in SEO. And at the time, it's not like I didn't know what it was, but it had literally popped up in one of my lectures. So maybe I had like two paragraphs of knowledge, but it did interest me. But I only had like I had very limited knowledge. So when the guy, um, the manager dug further into that and like I felt like I was caught a little bit, but I didn't intentionally mean to talk about something I didn't know, but I was just saying that I was interested in it. So if you are going to raise something up, I would just suggest, you know, making sure you have, you don't have to have a wealth of knowledge, but at least done some extra research into it. So I would definitely say that. And um, as a general tip, not just for Deloitte, but a general tip. I think it's best for people to really look at strength and competency based questions. So practice, practice that, because I think that will help you with all interviews for different companies. And um, another tip I'd probably have is that is really, really good to um, do is as you're applying for different places, make sure you do a SWOT analysis of the company. Because I, it wasn't Deloitte, but I applied to another place and I got to the um, final interview stage as well. 
And one question they asked me was, what opportunities do you see for us as a company in the market right now? And I really stumbled on that question. So just make sure you do a SWOT analysis because they might ask you stuff like, oh, how can you add value to us as a company? And that's where you talk about the opportunity in the market and how you can help, you know, close that gap and take advantage of the opportunity. So I would definitely say do a SWOT analysis. And um, that's a great point. Yeah. And for anyone that doesn't know that strengths, up, uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, right? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, do that. And also look at the company's values. Because a lot of companies will have um, their values put up or their principles, guidelines, whatever it is, even vision and mission statements. Definitely look at that because when you're doing the psychometric tests that they ask, um, so that's basically where they, um, for people that don't know, they ask you things like, oh, what would you do in this situation? Trying to basically understand who you are as a person. I mean, definitely put the answers you would do as a person but I would definitely take into account of the company's values when um, when when you're putting the um, answers in order because sometimes you might think oh one and two and three all seem very similar and they seem like the best answers and I would do all three of them when you have that decision to make and you're trying to pick you know which one should go on top think about the company's values like for example I know Deloitte really um really value teamwork and collaboration. So with my answers, when I struggled to think about what I would do, because I am generally a team worker, I would think, sorry, I'm, um, I generally, you know, I generally, my values generally align with Deloitte. I would think, okay, I know that there's teamwork here and they really value teamwork. So that would probably be my first answer. So I would definitely say, look at the values of the company as well. And, and that'll, that's really good. And that'll help you be consistent, right, throughout all of your answers. Because what I've heard from employers is that they actually try and watch for inconsistencies. So they try and think, oh, is this person sort of trying to game the system a little bit with their answers? And they're not being genuine. And they're just sort of trying to say what they think um, the person on the other side would want to see. Want, Whereas yeah. if you just stick to the values, you sort of align through all the way through, I guess. And I do definitely agree with that because with the many, well, not the many, but the few assessment centres I've been to, they, what they do is if they have two tests, um, two separate tests, they will not repeat the question, but they will ask very similar questions. So they would probably be able to um, um, see that you're being inconsistent and it'd be easier to catch you out. So I would definitely say, do put the answers that are true to you, but also think about the values perfect perfect and then and so last that we have the interview I guess and and talk to me about how you feel going into the group exercise and the interview were you confident at this point did you now feel like you were going to get it or no <laughs> you said I you was not mindset. confident at all I I was not at all because I just felt like everybody had experience and I didn't have experience. Like I said, this was my first job applying to in terms of office. Maybe I had done a little summer job, but it wasn't any office job and it wasn't even in retail. It was more like warehousing. So I hadn't had any um, office job experience and a lot of people there just seemed like they knew what they were doing. And I'm not the type of person who carries a piece of paper before my interview and starts looking and reading. Like I'm just like... <laughs> Well, if you don't know it now, you're not going to know it. So, um, but everyone had like their piece of paper and I was very, I was not confident at all. But when I got into the room, I did, I actually did struggle with the group interview in the beginning, trying to assert my voice in, but I found a way, like there was a girl leading, like I said, there are different roles and there are different ways you can get in. I found that there was one girl leading, which was very good for her, but and I'm used to maybe taking the leadership role because I know that that's the easiest way to insert yourself in the conversation. But this girl decided to lead and I was like, okay, you know what? So what I did was I kind of gathered the ideas because she was leading. She was like, oh yeah, okay, let's do this, let's do this. And I was like, okay, well, so far we've said this, 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 and this. And then we realized that there was miscommunication. So by me clarifying and saying there was this, 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 and this, we realized that there was miscommunication we were able to solve that so I think that was like that was a big 
aspect of the group interview. So like I said, there are many different ways to insert yourself. I wasn't necessarily the lead there, but I was able to gather our points together. So um, yeah, after the interview, I did, I don't know what came over me, but I did feel like I did quite well in it. And one person actually tapped me outside and was like, have you done this many times before that you did really well? And I was like, oh, okay, thank you. And he was another placement student as well. So I definitely feel before I went, because the group interview was before the one-on-one -on -one interview. So I definitely feel like that kind of boosted my confidence for my one-on-one um, -on -one interview. So yeah, that was nice. that's basically the interview process. And then I guess I think I waited about a week, 10 days, and then I got the acceptance offer and obviously I was over the moon. Amazing. But how, how about the one-on-one the -on -one interview then? So how did that go and any advice on how to kind of smash that with Deloitte? The one-on-one -on -one interview was where I did the presentation and they asked me about the question that I stumbled. But it was it was ah. fine. Be yourself. The guy, um, the man that interviewed me was really, really nice. And it was almost like a chat. And I guess that's why they don't make you stand up to kind of ease you. So like I said, they asked us quite a few strength based questions like um, and competency based questions. Another thing I will say is if you have like a side activity that you do, make sure you develop it and make sure you mention it, whether it is relevant to um, the job or not, mention it. And that's because they see that First of all, you might be an innovative person from. So, for example, now I um, I'm a photographer. I don't like saying that yet because I'm not a professional photographer, but I do run my own blog and Instagram page. And I would have never in a million years thought that was useful. I mean, it is it is, you know, there are aspects of photography and digital marketing, but I didn't think it was useful. Like they wouldn't want to know that I'm just a kid doing a pet project, you know, but they really like side activities because it shows organization skills. It shows, I guess, a bit of business acumen. It shows um, time management skills because obviously you're balancing university and all of that stuff. And it just shows like determination and hardworking. And probably when you're doing, when you're running a small business like that, you're going to be networking with people. So it shows networking skills. So they really, they like to hear things like that, essentially. They don't want to just know, oh, you're academically smart, you know, and I don't even consider myself like that academically smart. They want to know about the other things you're doing outside of work, because at the end of the day, they need innovative minds. They need creative minds to add value to their business. It's not just academics. Like they need, they they want to see what people are doing and learn from that and bring that those type of people to their company. So I would definitely say bring up your side hustle, you know, um, talk about it. But like I said, if if it isn't as relevant, try and link the skills and what you've done from it that might be useful to um, where you're going to work. So I'll definitely say that. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And it's good to give really varied examples as well in your answer. So you've got answers from you know university courses you've got previous work experience but now you've got a passion project as well which not many other people will have mm -hmm. I've, I've definitely seen candidates be successful especially in marketing um from doing similar things from setting up you know e-commerce stores blogs instagram pages and, and feel free to drop your handle if you want to overload yourself with, with followers off the back of this um uh, but yeah it's like, like huh no, oh, at JPEG Images on um, Instagram, and then you'll see my blog in my bio. But yeah, you can go check that out. I mean, I don't know how updated it is, but you can go check that out after the interview. JPEG Images, yeah? Yeah, JPEG Images. Mm, that's a good, that's a good handle. Wow, that's a very good <laughs> handle. Um, but yeah, no, that can really make you stand out. And I, I also think in interviews, it's good to think of it as a as a two-way discussion where you can kind of build rapport and connection with another person. So naturally as an interviewer, when I hear you do that kind of thing, that piques my interest as well. And that gives me something off the script to talk about. And it's just another way to build up it's a good connection. Definitely. So that's Most, really cool. And when you talk about these things and you elaborate, you actually realize you're, you might be answering some of the interviews questions that were gonna come along. So they don't ask you those questions again, because, it's all about phrasing questions. Sometimes if someone phrases a question that might be too hard and you might not understand, you'll be put off and you might not 
um, answer it properly. But when you answer their questions through like your explanations of other things, you'll find out that it's easy and they probably won't ask you like the straightforward questions anymore because you have shown those skills. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's that's fantastic. Um, okay, so congrats on getting that job. That seems amazing. I mean, one thing I've really picked up on there as like a theme is that you kind of thought you just weren't going to get it. So I think sometimes when people are like absolutely feel, you know, they really need it. This has to be the job that they get. This is the one for them. That really adds a lot of pressure. And so you almost take the pressure off yourself by saying, you know what, I might not get this one. But what I like to say is to focus on the process of doing things rather than the result. So at each stage, you just try and do something that you're proud of. You try and do an application you're proud of, an interview that you're proud of. And if nothing else, you're learning and you're developing experience, even if you don't get that role. So I like that sort of theme that you had uh, throughout there. And then, so I guess the, the way you fell into this was quite serendipitous, right? You kind of just thought, but I like what you did. You kind of said, I really want to do marketing. And, you know, tech is a growing space and people think that'll be a good industry to work in. So I'll marry those two up. So I guess you, maybe you got a little bit lucky there in that someone gave you that really good advice on, on the tech side of things early on because right now I mean every year it looks more and more important and um, people are constantly asking me how do you break into into tech and this is one way to do that but let's just briefly touch on uh, diversity in tech and I'd love to get your thoughts on this and some people don't don't tend to think about this topic so maybe that that's the case for you but any thoughts on the kind of lack of diversity in tech has that been an issue for you at all do you think I mean it, it looks like um, roughly from the research that I did, you know, there's only a couple of percent of black and ethnic minorities when you look at uh, tech in the UK. So yeah, I would love to get your thoughts on that and any encouragement you have to, you have that on, with for others from underrepresented groups on, on getting into tech would be amazing. Um, first of all, yes, I will definitely say that there isn't as many women and um, what's it called, BAME students in tech, and it should definitely, definitely change based on the fact of Having a diverse um, workforce and uh, um, and diverse a diverse group of people working will obviously add value to a company, you know, in terms of especially marketing because you understand your consumers more. So I definitely feel like um, it, it's very important that we have um, BAME students and ethnic minorities in um, in these roles, especially in tech, which is a forward moving, you know, industry. It's really important that we have representation. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I'm even doing this interview so that people know that me being a black woman, we can be in these spaces and hopefully we can thrive. I mean, I'll come back and tell you guys that I'm doing well. But um, yeah, to show that we can thrive and we can, um, you know, we can do we can be successful in these spaces. So it's really important. And for those who are kind of like, I guess, I guess, obviously, employers have to do their part in terms of attracting um, BAME students, but for those who want to get into these spaces, um, into tech, you know, into the um, tech industry and tech roles, I would definitely say, even if you're not into like the technical tech roles, there's tech in every space. Like I said, I I wanted to initially go into marketing, and then I realized, okay, tech is really relevant, and I mash the two. I guess everyone can mash there to um they can mash tech with something so for example if you're um if you're into law you know you can mash law and tech their roles their tech roles in law and they're not technical but then they do they're on the surface of like digital digital law um contracts all sorts of stuff that have to do with technology in law so i would try and mash the role together that's another thing someone told me someone gave me advice that tech or a tech role isn't what you think it is. You don't need to know how to code. I don't know how to code, still don't know how to code. Like you don't yeah. need to know <laughs> all of that. They will teach you and they're willing to train you. And that's another great thing about Deloitte. I would definitely say there are so many training opportunities, not just on the job experience, but training opportunities to the point where I'm overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I can choose from and pick and you know, and um, that's another thing I would definitely say when you're applying for placements. Like, I definitely just applied to Deloitte because I thought it was a big four company. It's amazing. But when I actually looked into it, um, 
because I actually did an HR project on it. When I looked into the practice, I was definitely saying when I apply for grad roles, hopefully, I mean, I get back into Deloitte, but when I apply for grad roles, if I do, I'm going to definitely look at the training practices that um, businesses offer and the the type of development, personal development they, um, you know, they have and the infrastructure of that in their company. So I'll definitely say that. But yeah, going back to your point, I definitely feel like we need more black and brown ethnic minority students in tech space, um, not just for representation, but like I said, to add value. We have um, we have a lot of unlocked value that I think employers need to try and, you know, take advantage of. So I would definitely say it's really, really important. And platforms like this, again, help um, ethnic minorities. So shout out to diverse um, diverse hires. <laughs> I really, really do appreciate that. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful to see how, how you're kind of thriving in the tech space and you felt it's, you know, really, really comfortable and inclusive. And yeah, I hope that from this, more and more people are going to kind of be encouraged to apply and, and kind of work in tech. So, yeah, I mean, this has been super, super good. Um, and we, I guess we'll wrap up pretty soon. But I just wanted to ask how you see yourself moving forward. So, you know, grad schemes, you want to stay in this space. I actually noticed on your LinkedIn that you've got some aspirations to start your own uh, uh, I, business one day. And I know you've got your, your kind of your blog and stuff, but you want to start a digital marketing agency in the future as well, which is super cool and have a bit of a connection to Nigeria, which is close to my heart as well. So, I mean, yeah, just from a career standpoint or an entrepreneurial standpoint, where do you see things going from here? Um, OK, so right now, in terms of development, I'm actually trying, I'm currently going on a, well, doing, undertaking a UI UX course. I actually want to get into a bit of the design of digital marketing while also understanding strategy and, you know, advising people on um, digital marketing aspects. So I'm definitely looking at that. So that's actually more in the tech space. So um, I'm looking at that in terms of my development and training and then in future, I guess I would go for, I obviously want to do a grad scheme, hopefully with Deloitte, but I'm definitely open to other places. And it would obviously, I think it would be centered around digital marketing role. I'm not yet sure I want to specialize in anything in digital marketing. Like I said, I've only, well, I haven't said this, but I've only been in Deloitte for a few months. So I haven't necessarily figured out what exactly I want to do, but I still think I want to keep my options as broad as possible, perhaps then do a master's when I'm doing my graduate role in something specific in digital marketing. Then, um, yes, like you saw in my LinkedIn, I, I think I eventually want to go back to Nigeria and set up a digital marketing firm um, because I feel that market is so untapped in Nigeria and I really want to you know take advantage of it being an early adopter um, and get that first you know first mover advantage there and also to help tech grow there in the sense that provide opportunities for those who are in Nigeria so they don't need to come like abroad to different places to get that experience to get to almost have you know a kind of mentorship program even though it is a company a mentorship program for people for girls especially that want to get into tech so that's definitely why I want to go back to Nigeria and set up a digital marketing firm there and that's also I think that's also inspired my development in terms of training I want to make sure that I am well versed in the different aspects of digital marketing so when I go back I can share I have a wealth of knowledge to share essentially that's really cool that's really cool I can't wait to see some of those amazing things that you're uh, you're going to be part of and yeah, that, I think everyone listening will be excited to hear more about that, but they can catch you on Instagram, they can catch you on LinkedIn. Um, any any final words of encouragement? Because I think you've done really, really well. And um, I, I imagine from this, you've helped at least one person and hopefully you've helped at least one person get a job at Deloitte next year. And I'm sure Deloitte are going to, um, yeah, see sense and make sure they hold on to you for their grad scheme, especially when they see this. Um, <laughs> but any, any final words of encouragement you know it's been a difficult year especially in the job market for young people for students just as we close out any kind of words of encouragement or advice maybe what you would say to yourself kind of a year year ago kind of thing um to, to provide some encouragement 
I would just first like to say that I sympathize with people going through, you know, trying to get a job during this pandemic. It is really, really hard. I have loads of friends because they're in their final year, so they're all looking for graduate roles. And it, it is really hard. But I would just say, do not give up. Continue trying. I know there might be so many rejections coming your way, but continue trying because you will eventually get there. And even if it's not necessarily what you want, like let's say you're looking for um, a graduate role. If you see a summer internship, apply for the summer internship because the summer internship might turn into a graduate role, you know? And if let's say it gets further down the line into June, it's getting closer to when, you know, graduate schemes will start, develop yourself. For example, my placement with Deloitte was supposed to start in September, but because of the pandemic got moved to February. During September to February, I was developing myself. I was going on Google. I was doing, um, I did the fundamentals of digital marketing course. And, you know, I feel like that has helped me kind of navigate Deloitte, um, especially because it's virtual and you, you can't see what everyone's doing. But at least now I know, OK, this is what they're talking about a little bit. You know, just develop yourself in this time. Um, you know, the pandemic is slowly, slowly moving out of our lives. So eventually you will get there and you want to be ready when you get there. But keep, keep on going, whether it's, you know, doing your side hustle, whether it's um, applying for summer internships instead or applying for placements in startups, do it. Because I'm sorry, I said placements, graduate roles in startups, do it, especially because I know I had an iffy view about startups, like, oh, they're just startups. I'm not sure I want to go into that. Startups will develop you and give you the best training because you're almost spread so thin. You're doing every little thing. So you're, what's it called? Your eyes are open to many different things that you probably wouldn't be open to in a big firm. So don't look down on companies or look down on opportunities. Take what is given to you and that builds experience. So I would definitely say that. Incredible, incredible. I think you've given some terrific advice. And as I said, I think you've really helped at least one person. So just want to thank you for, for joining and, and doing that. I really, really appreciate it. For anyone who does uh, want to find an early career role um, or get hold of some free careers resources, then you can head over to wearediverse.io. Uh, everything is free. So uh, do make best use of, of that and, and reach out if we can help you in any way in kind of landing these early career roles appreciate how difficult it is, but there are definitely opportunities out there that you can land. So just wanted to thank you. It's been amazing. I think you've done a, a terrific job on this one. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, thank you very much. And I was going to say, you can reach out to me. Anyone who's watching this can reach out to me. I'm very friendly. I'm willing to give advice. I want to see people succeed no matter, you know, what, no matter what industry it is, even if it's just a general like application process question, ask me, I will answer. And ask people you know people aren't as mean as you think they are or they're not as busy as they think you are they always have time for you so ask people even if it's not me and yeah thank you very much for inviting me to um speak about my experience no worries that's very kind of you what's the best way for people to reach you is it on uh, jpeg on uh, your insta or linkedin or uh, i guess you can reach me on my linkedin because if you come from any other platform i probably would be like whoa <laughs> But um, yeah, um, you can definitely reach me as um, Jolla Roberts on um, LinkedIn. Amazing. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jolla. Really appreciate your time. And yeah, thanks for doing this.